it's it's Halloween. There's still no dog. With everything going on in Raid, I needed to just take a step back from uh, Raid as a whole. I've been like logging in and doing basic stuff, but I haven't really been paying attention to the news. I've been kind of feeling that lull, a, a low point for me as a content creator within Raid. Uh, not not that I'm going to stop making content, but it's just it's gotten to this point within Raid and, and making uh, YouTube videos for Raid where it's just kind of like, you know, I, I'm pretty I've pretty much done everything that I've wanted to and I've met the goals that I've already wanted to. Like, yeah, I could work towards 8K and get to several access, which, you know, it'd be nice, but I don't know. But I figured it doesn't take too much for me to do these Reddit review things and uh, people are asking me about my opinion for this, so I figured why not spend the time and just, you know, connect with you guys, the viewers, about this specific subject. And this also popped up on Reddit, so you already know what it is. Fusion looks like a skip. I knew that Hansel and Gretel were coming, but that's just about all I knew. Like, I, I saw their kit, kind of. I, I skimmed over it. I didn't really look at it. I just know, based off the comments and some people in Discord, that they were going to be damage dealers. I didn't look at anything else, but we're here on the Hell Hades website. Somebody in the Discord dropped this link, and I figured, why not do this in tandem? All right, seven new champions joining Raid Shadow Legends. Fusion will begin Thursday, the 31st. Now, the Fusion, I don't know who the Fusion, oh, it's right here, Gretel Hagbane. So the Fusion is going to be this woman here. Am I going to do the Fusion? No, I'm not going to do any of this event and no nothing i'm not doing anything i'm also happy that i'm going to be chilling because this looks like a skip apparently to a lot of people but we'll see we'll see what everybody's saying but like i said when the thor five star soul deck of whatever you want to call it whenever the asgard event ended i was like hey i'm taking a break from everything i'm not gonna do anything i'm gonna i'm gonna relax until 2025 and that's what i'm doing here so um you know i, I suggest that you potentially consider doing that too you know maybe Maybe uh, don't bother doing all your advanced quests and every little thing every single day. Uh, you know, avoid burnout. So, introducing Gretel Hagbane, the legendary Halloween fusion champion for Raid Shadow Legends in 2024. Her A1 has a 50% chance of placing decreased defense for two turns. And if her brother is on the same team, attacks all enemies instead with a 25% chance of placing the big version of decreased defense, placing an extra hit against enemies that have any buffs. That's cool. Attacks one enemy four times. I'm thinking Fire Knight. The first hit will ignore 10% of the target's defense. The second hit is going to ignore 15%. The third is going to ignore 20. The fourth is going to hit 25. That's cool, I guess. If this attack kills an enemy, resets the cooldown of this skill and then fills the champion's turn meter by 50. This is on a three turn cooldown. Yeah, um, this is a pretty nice, solid attack, but whenever it comes to damage dealers you just never really know what they're going to be like without the multipliers i almost said markiplier <laughs> without the Mark markiplier no but um without having multipliers you just don't know like on paper this sounds cool right four hitter ignoring defense mechanics already built in but still and then you know this champion turn meter is pretty nice but still we don't know the third move, A3, is going to be an AoE, decreasing the turn meter of all enemies by 25%. If your brother is on the team, decrease the turn meter by 50 instead, and it can't be resisted. Then fills the champion's turn meter by 20% for each enemy alive after the attack. Cool. Yeah. Passive. And the reason I'm kind of just like, eh, about it, it's, for me, looking at this, I often think about champions, any new champions that I get, and I, you know, there's two questions that I, that I ask myself, like, is this champion going to be cool? like a fun champion for me to play with. This Gretel person champion is like, yeah, you know what I mean? But I'm also not gonna spend two or like three or four weeks slugging over it. As of right now, her kit, and again, I still don't know what other people are saying because other people might have an opinion that I don't have, or um, I might be missing something with the connection with the um, the fusion partner, so we'll see. But as of right now, I'm not, I'm not convinced that this is interesting enough for me to go for even if I was in the mood to go for it. Passive. Passive is going to fill turn meter by 50% whenever somebody gets an extra turn. If the brother's on the team, also fills their turn meter, the brother's turn meter, by 50% whenever an enemy is granted an extra turn. And if Hansel is on the same team, Hansel. You guys ever watch Zoolander? Hansel. So hot right now. Hansel. 
uh, is killed by the enemy instantly activates the sacred ritual, which is the AOE decreasing turn meter move. So yeah, I mean, she's cool, but does she bring anything else that's kind of new? Because as it stands right now, it's not anything that stands out to me. Let's check the brother real quick. Attacks one enemy, 50% uh, weaken. Okay, so Gretel is, it becomes an AOE instead and then places weaken on all enemies for two turns, places an extra hit under... Okay, so I kind of like this in the sense that Skull Crown and Sinesha also kind of have the same mechanics where they, they play off of each other and they're able to AOE in conjunction with one another. Like, imagine the, these two guys together in, like, an ally attack team. It's like another blender thing. But then again, it's just like... One, we don't know how we're going to have to get Hansel. And... Two, it's like if you really want a blender team, you could just use Sinesha and Skullcrown. Uh, you know, granted, you're not going to get the weaken and the 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 um what do you call it, decreased defense, but still, uh, we also get extra hits. But so do Sinesha and Skullcrown. So the A2 attacks one enemy twice, ignoring shield and unkillable. That's nice. Um, grants an extra turn if this attack kills an enemy. So basically, Rodos AOE ignores 15% of the target's defense cooldown. Uh, increases the cooldown of a random skill on each enemy by two turns. If Gretel is on the same team, ignores 30% of the target's defense, also ignoring, also increasing the cooldowns of enemy skills, all enemy skills by two turns, and it can't be resisted. That's cool too. You gotta think about like one, how much is it gonna take to get this champion, and two, do you have somebody else that can do the same things? Like if if you're looking for somebody who can do cooldown increasing. There's epic champions that can do it, like um, Yaga, no, Basher. Basher can do it, assuming you can get a Basher. The other thing is, how are we going to be able to get the partner? How are we going to get Hansel? Is it going to be an absurd amount of Void Shards? We just had a 2x with a guaranteed Little Miss Annie, so it's likely that Polarium is going to make this guy like 120 Voids worth, so I don't know, I'm just speculating here. And then Brotherly Bond reflects all fear and true fear, debuffs back to the attacker. Oh, if Gretel's on the same team and is killed by the enemy, activates Baneful Burst, which is the AoE um, cooldown increasing skills. Uh, you know, some of these things aren't going to work in Hydra. This fear, true fear thing is also pretty nice in the sense that Inquisitor Shamael does that and, and it makes the fear head pretty much obsolete. Now, I don't think this... Yeah, no, never mind. It, it only works on him. It's only going to reflect the fear, or basically remove the fear, on Hansel here. And even if Gretel's on the same team, it's only on her. And then the other argument is, hey, if you got Inquisitor Shamil, might as well just go for him. Is this guy is this guy a void? What are we doing here? Okay, so he's not a void. All right, the Fusion Epic Signy of High Shield. Um, got a Fusion Rare here. And Arnon the Shining. We have Volcanos, Fumor, Faction Unity. Uh, Nell Blackteeth. Isn't she the girl on the front? Yeah, she is the girl on the front. Oh, this is a mythical champion. Okay, so there's two forms. Oh, this is pretty cool. I mean, I like this. I like this change. You know, she starts out like this and then A1 on her first form. Oh, increase ally accuracy in arena by 100. That's nice. A1 steals targets turn meter 10%, steals an additional 5% for each debuff on the enemy, 75% chance of placing true fear for one turn. Ignore resistance. A2 steals all buffs from all enemies, decreasing the turn meter by 10%, decreases each target's turn meter by another 5% for every debuff, also instantly activates all poisons, and then places a sheep, fuck that, places a sheep debuff for one turn on all enemies that don't, wait, what? Then places, oh, sleep, I, I thought it said sheep, oh my god, I was like, you're gonna sheep everybody again? Nah, sleep for one turn on all enemies that don't have poison, so that's pretty useful. Now, three turn cooldown, AOE places increased defense and weaken on all enemies, then fills turn meter of all allies by 20%. Solid pretty much everywhere. This is a pretty nice move. Transform. Oh, what is a Black Teeth's buffet? Whenever an enemy receives a buff, is healed, or has their turn meter increased, places a poison on that enemy, ignore block debuffs, and increases this champion's turn meter for every five, uh, by 5% for every poison placed. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I didn't know you have to click this over here to uh, check the other form. On her second form, her A1 will attack an enemy four times. Fire Knight, each hit ignores 30% of the target's defense. Each hit will also decrease the target's max HP by 25% of damage inflicted if a target is not a boss. Also places a shield on this champion for 25% of their max HP. Cut him up, attacks one enemy twice, deals 100% more damage to anybody, uh, anybody who's got CC debuffs on them. 
if the tar including petrification, that's awesome. If the target is killed, instantly activates the A3, which is an AoE, placing true fear for two turns, can't be resisted or blocked by enemies with 50% or less HP. Passive is whenever this champion kills an enemy using an active skill, grants this champion an extra turn. Each debuff placed by this champion in either form increases the champion's HP uh, attack and defense by 2%, stacks up to 50, increases speed by 2, up to 50 in their alt form. This is pretty cool too. The Witch looks awesome. I don't know how they're going to go about releasing this one. All right, so Fusion looks like a skip. Just watch Scratch's video. Their damage is uh, less than impressive. Her damage without Hansel is abysmal, and even with him, she still doesn't hit hard enough to make me really want to spend the resources to go for her. Multipliers are low. This is what he feared. A2 is intriguing, but it hits like a wet noodle. Fusion looks like another skip, which is a good thing. You know, you, you, you kind of want Fusions to be a skip because you want to make sure that you're taking some time to yourself to just chill out. In Pat Riley, we trust. I'm happy that it's another easy skip. I'm hoping they have a really good one in December. Thanksgiving is coming. Yeah, not that impressive, especially since getting the two of them is going to be expensive. Looks like it's time to hoard resources and farm Minotaur and Sand Devil. Bro, Raid has completely backed themselves into a corner. The problem isn't even the damage being high mid or an attack champion. It's that you need both of them to even be solid. Doesn't look great, but I'll be doing it. I'll get bored if I don't. The resources are not a problem. She needs Hansel to be decent, and I'm not investing in the fusion. They are much more complex than Thor. Yeah, exactly. You need a damage dealer to use Thor. They offer control and counter mechanics. The only problem is that this is only true if you have the two of them. True. If that's what you want, uh, talking about the cooldown stuff, go with Basher. Yeah, exactly what I pointed out. Increase the cooldown of all target skills by two turns, and he's an epic. Since Polarium screwed us with Freya's cost and the fusion is better with their partner, I'm wondering if they'll significantly increase the price for the guaranteed event. Remember when everyone said Wixpo's shield growth was weak? You guys gotta stop going off what little info you have in these YouTube videos. It's an attack champion that was showcased to do less damage than a rare level L Hain with almost the exact same stats. That's enough to go off of. They were never meant to be damage dealers. The selling point was always the irresistible lockout. What catches my eye for the duo is not the A2 or the A3, but their A1 AoE skills that can apply decreased defense and weaken. This has me thinking there might be a Hydra team that can effectively exploit counterattacks with Hansel, Gretel, Freya, Valkyrie, and Martyr, plus an ally attack champion such as Podrick. Packmaster, pa where's our dog at? They, where's our dog at? Packmaster would round out the team for their mischief tanking and block buffs, plus the damage boost from Hex. No, you know what, where the fuck is the dog at? Because people were like, oh, burrito, keep waiting, keep waiting. Bro, where's the dog at? People are like, oh, you know, you never know. It might be the Halloween fusion. Bro, where's the dog at? I wish I could just find people's comments and, and just comment back to them and just be like, hey, it's it's Halloween. There's still no dog. It was kind of obvious that their damage would be lower. Saw only Boozer's video and her damage wasn't that far from Georgia's. Really? But because of all the utility and extra turns and turn meter manipulations, not talking about lockout, it would be weird if their damage was on par with pure damage dealers. So I value this as a it's a skip standpoint, as all of them have in the recent past, Yashard Wixpill. If you are burnt out, just skip. Perfect. You don't have to tell any <laughs> you don't have to tell everyone. But if you are still persistent on telling everybody, make your evaluation better, please, or at least more in depth. Thanks for solidifying my skip feelings. Everybody keep in mind for players who are less than six months who may have few or even no other significant damage dealers. They could be very useful champions for players 6 to 12 months perhaps less so for three plus year players these are likely nowhere near close to the champs they already have so while some may skip others might be keen to pick these champions up yeah don't forget it's a traditional fusion notably harder and more costly than a hybrid or fragment i don't even like the boss but my baby got so hard too she ain't playing with you hoes i think she really a